From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I'll take that wise guy. This is Frankie Scanlon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell him. What was that you yelled on the phone? You heard it. I heard you say Johnny Dollar. I told you a long time back I wasn't Hillary Fuchs. You told me a lot of things. If I'm going to see Costigan, trot him out. Just open the door and walk right in. I'm right behind you, see? Hello, Sam. Johnny. Johnny Dollar. What's he doing here, Frankie? You... You mean this isn't Fuchs? Get out of here! Get out of here before I throw something at you! You heard the man, Frankie, blow. No, sit down, Johnny. I won't bother shaking hands. You tried to put me in jail the last time we met. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, Miami Beach. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, 518 Spear Boulevard, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Tears of Night matter. I'm going to sit down here behind my desk and have a drink, Johnny. And while I'm having it, I'm going to ask you a question. Save your breath. I'll answer it anyhow, Sam. Sam Costigan sat hunched behind the big mahogany desk, glaring at me with a pair of small pig eyes half hidden in a beefy red face. Both hands rested out in front of him, flat. I told him how I'd come to Miami Beach to look into an insurance claim made by Elise Wendover, how I'd been in the office of Hillary Fuchs, her business manager, when Frank Scanlon had walked in, mistaken me for Fuchs, waved a gun under my nose, and insisted I come with him to see Costigan. So here I was, and so what about it? Uh, help yourself, Johnny. Well, that's a pretty nice joint, Sam. How long have you been in business in Florida? Oh, about two years. How's the gross? Isn't it as good as running beer in Chicago, but them days are gone forever. I make out all right. Two crap tables to rule that table's a couple of games. A bar and restaurant break it up even. Man, I gotta be careful. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Well, you seem to have enough muscle outside and around to keep you comfy and cozy. Yeah, punks, all of them. Look at that Frankie Scanlon who dragged you over here. Crazy, that one. But he's the best of the lot, the best I can get nowadays. Not a good muscle left in the business. You could retire. Yeah, I might do that one of these days. No. Tell me about your hookup with this window over there, man. No hookup, Sam. She claimed benefits on her husband's life insurance. The claim should have been made two years ago. I investigated. It's okay. Made her? Yeah. Screwball, huh? In some ways. She's all right. Well, maybe it's as good you're here as this Fuchs guy. I wanted him to handle some business for hers, but uh, maybe you can handle it. Yeah, you ever see this before? No. Oh, it's a little bit of necklace called the Tears of Night. It's worth a big hunk of cash. These four diamonds are good stuff. Your friend Miss Wendover left it here a week or so ago when she went for her plunge at the roulette table. Anything the same? It's a very pretty necklace, Sam. Okay. We both know she's screwy, a widow with a lot of dough, and a boyfriend named Teddy. Teddy Davis, he paints. Well, she sent me a check for the five G's she lost that night, and I wanted Fuchs to take this thing back to her, but then I got you instead. I want you to take it to her, huh? How about it? Is that all? That's all. I got my dough, she gets her tears of night back. I couldn't trust any of my punks with it, I don't like to be seen in public, so uh, you just take it back, huh? It's very simple. <laughs> Why? Don't ever go on the stage, Sam. Why not? You can act, but you can't lie. You just can't lie at all. And it takes a good liar to be a good actor. Now that you've told me how simple it is, suppose you give me the unexpurgated sequel. All right, so a check bounced. Oh, stop it, Sam. She can't issue a check without a counter-signature by Hillary Fuchs. He hasn't issued one check on her account since he took it over ten days ago. So if this thing is hers, explain it all to me, will you? The way it is. <sighs> I want another drink. Yeah, you're right, Johnny. There wasn't any check. Miss Wendover called me a couple of hours ago and said if I didn't have this thing back to her tonight, she'd call a load of cops and come out and tear us to join her parts. She 
She sounded like she'd do it, too. I mean, well, you, you mother, you, you can't tell what she'll do from a minute till the next. Screw her, you know? Not so screwy if she dropped 5000 and left that. And now she gets it back for nothing. I just want to get it off my hands. If she came out here with a cop, I'd be closed for the season. And I'm getting old. Hey, you, know, you know where she lives? Mm-hmm. I was there earlier tonight. Here, take the ice store, and I'll chalk it up to experience, huh? Then you can grab a cab back and come on back out here, and I'll see that you have a good time on the house. How about it? I'll take it to her, but I won't come back here, Sam. Oh, Scanlon, feel it, them guys, huh? They worry you? You do. Well? I don't believe your last story either. The only thing I believe is that this is Mrs. Wendover's necklace. So I'll take it to her. Sam. Yeah? You better get someone beside Feely at that table after this. You're telling me. You're telling me. He was mopping his face when I closed the door and went downstairs. By that time, the customers had started to roll in. Young, fresh-faced men with sallow eyes and quick movements, anxious to step up to the tables and lose money. Women in strapless dresses anxious to show off their newest suntans and help whatever man they were with lose money. Old men, old women, dressed to the teeth. It was a sick old scene from a sick old play. Expense account item four, six dollars. Cab fare from Sam Costigan's gambling club to Elise Wendover's apartment. Oh, Teddy, I thought you'd never get here. The performance begins at 10 o'clock, and you know how the traffic is, and if we're going to have a bite, do we... You aren't Teddy at all, are you? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Wendover. Where's Teddy? I don't know. Oh. What are you looking at? Your throat. Really, Mr. Mr. Dollar. Johnny Dollar. I met you in Hillary Fuchs office. We talked here later on. Remember? Of course I remember. Well, really, Mr. Dollar, I'm only waiting for Teddy to come by so we can make the first show at the plaza. I better telephone him, don't you think? Yes, you do that. Good night, Mr. Dollar. The white ermine cape she was wearing and the black strapless thing needed a final touch. She had it. A diamond necklace. In fact, the tears of night, the one I had in my pocket, was hanging around her lovely neck. Downstairs, in the good light of the lobby, I snapped open the necklace case. Mortuous, it read, House of Jewelry. A gloomy word with a gloomy address. The sign on the window of the House of Mortuous gave a phone number in case of emergency. Item six, ten cents, one phone call about my emergency. I made it vague to Mr. Mortuous that thousands of people might die before 6 o'clock in the morning unless I could talk to someone about a piece of jewelry. It went over. Item 750 cents, cab fare to the Sandy Beach Hotel on the less expensive side of Miami Beach. You find me a bit indisposed, Mr. Dollar, but on the phone you said it was a matter of jewelry. Therefore, Hannibal Mortuous is at your service. Now then, sir, what is so urgent? I came to ask you about a diamond necklace. I found your name stamped on the inside of the case. House of Mortuous, a most respected name in diamonds as well as all the lapidary arts. Most respected. Fine jewels and the name Mortuous are... Oh, I do beg your pardon. Continue, Mr. Dollar. I want you to take a look at this. (laughs) And how, sir, do you come in possession of the tears of night? A man named Sam Costigan, who runs a gambling club, asked me to deliver it to a lady named Elise Wendover. Do you know her? A lovely body propelled by a ridiculous mind. This matter you have just described bears me out. For shame, such conduct. A gambling house. The tears of night are porn. Then this is the real thing. It isn't phony. Mr. Dollar, I'm a gemologist. The house of mortuous. Of course it's real. Take a good look. When an artist creates a dazzling thing of beauty such as this, would he be so unlikely as to forget the time, the patience, the agony of his creation? Eh? See here, look here, under the light. Four weeks, Mr. Dollar, four weeks working night and day just to drill that anchor for a simple molding. But, ah, see how each stone is carefully mounted to capture every single pinpoint of light. Beautiful, beautiful. An incomparable masterpiece for the money. Well, I'm just curious, Mr. Mortuous. How much money? About $10,000 on the wholesale market. What did Noah Wendover pay for it? $25,000. I saw another one just like it tonight. They look ridiculous. The finest workman at best would only create a crude resemblance. This kind of artistry demands an artist, Mr. Dollar. (laughs) And I am that artist. But it could get by, a copy of it. To the unpracticed eye, to the layman perhaps, yes. Latet in anguis herba, Latin. 
Yeah, well, all I know is Agricola. A snake in the grass, eh? Something wrong? Yeah, mildly put, something wrong, yes. Well, how much do I owe you for your time, Mr. Mortuary? Well, nothing, nothing. It was my pleasure. You know, glancing at that again reassures me of the value and dignity of my work. Anywhere, it is magnificent. Uh, but, Eduardo, you say something is wrong. What? Mrs. Wendover, you say you met her. Uh, several times. She ever mentioned anything to you about a curse? 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 No, I can't say that she did. I, uh, may I ask you a question? Yes, yeah, sure. Are you a friend of hers? In a way... Off and on. <laughs> I know what you mean. One is never quite certain with Mrs. Wendover whether one will be recognized or not is one. <laughs> well, it's late. Yeah, well, I'm just leaving. No, no, you, you, you misread me, sir. I wasn't speaking of my own comfort. I, I noticed the fog is coming. It is dark outside. This is a lonely area. Uh, that is a valuable object. Uh, are you armed? No. If you are at all concerned for the safety of that piece, I have a small safe in my rooms. You may have the key if you'd care to leave it overnight. I'll take it with me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just as well, probably. Suggestion only. You uh, leave satisfied, I trust, Mr. Dollar? Oh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mortuous. My pleasure, Mr. Dollar. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> remember. Omnia mortuous bonum vocal est. Uh. All speak well and mortuous. A pun, sir, a pun. Good evening. <laughs> Downstairs in the dismal lobby of the Sandy Beach Hotel, I looked out beyond the dirty glass windows to discover that the fog had indeed come in and surrounded the area with a choking darkness. The concern of Mr. Mortuous for his artistic creation told me to bang on the night bell and ask the night clerk for some wrapping paper and 50 cents worth of stamps. Expense account item eight. Item nine, phone call for a cab. Just before it arrived, I dropped the tears of night addressed to myself at my hotel in the lobby mailbox. I don't think the two hoodlums waiting outside saw me do it. I didn't think they saw me at all, but they followed my cab when it took me back to my hotel. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, and the old curse comes up with an old-fashioned flourish. See you then. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank <laughs> you.